Hello everyone, and welcome to Etaline. It's been a busy couple of months. With collabs and Halloween over, I thought there would be nothing nicer than to practice my dull work and try out some new techniques, bringing you along for the creation. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below, like the video if you like it, and comment. I love reading all of your comments. With that all being said, let's get started on our creation. The doll that I'm going to be customising today is Gulia from the Monster High range. With this model, I'm very unfamiliar with its sculpt. In the future, I plan on revamping the original Gulia just in the same way I've done for Draculaura, Cleo, Frankie and Claudine. As I'm so unfamiliar with this model though, I wanted to practice this doll before attempting the revamp, as to be able to get a feel for the structure. To get started on this doll, I am going to prep it for customization by removing the hair by cutting it away with scissors, later plunging the head in hot water to soften the vinyl head for removal from the body. To remove all the factory paint, I'm going to use 100% acetone and a cotton swab. Once it's all cleaned away, I'm going to give the head a really good clean in warm soapy water, later spraying it with a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish, and repairing the slit I made in the back of the head with zap glue. Once that's all done, we can start giving this doll her new face. The plan for this doll is to create a neo-alternative goth style. Heavy eyeliner, rich deep eyeshadow and lipstick with metal and leather textures. As I said before, I wanted to use this creation as an opportunity to practice on this sculpt. Ghoulia's sculpt is so different from what I'm normally used to working with. It has quite deep set eye sockets that raise the forehead and cheekbones out forward making it such a pronounced face shape. The only time I've ever worked on this model before was my second ever attempt at a face up when I first started out. Here it is. Insert fart noise, am I right? It's horrendously bad. I'm going to attempt at creating smaller eye shapes, making sure to stay within the eye socket area, keeping the eye creases really close to the eyelids. Once I got a basic draft of the eye shape, I can start creating the makeup look for this doll. To start, I'm going to buff in pink all over the lid, moving upwards to the centre of the face, where the nose bridge would be positioned. Later adding a small amount to the bottom lid as well. Once I was happy with the placement, I'll give it a spray of matte varnish again. Once that's all dry, I'm going to start drafting out this dramatic eyeliner design. I didn't really have a plan for the design of this. The only plan I had, so to speak, was that I wanted to create a very sharp and symmetrical eyeliner look. To make sure any draft work doesn't stain the vinyl, I'm going to use a lighter shaded pencil. In this case, a very dull grey colour. Once I was confident, I can go in with the black. Here, I'm just intensifying that eyeshadow with a deeper shade of red, 
once more buffing it into the vinyl. Once I was happy, I can give it another coat of varnish. For the brows, I initially had absolutely no intention of adding them until I saw Maisie Williams' bleached eyebrows and oh my gosh, I just had to recreate it on this doll. They look fantastic. Grabbing my white watercolour pencil, I'm going to start adding really small, spaced out pencil marks. I don't want to fill in the eyebrows as a singular colour. I really wanted to make sure that you can see the skin underneath to replicate that bleached eyebrow look. To make this liner really bold, I'm going to be using Chimera Color Pigment Paint, which is a super intense black paint. It really makes the eyeliner just pop out. I was so, so freaking nervous for this bit. I had to keep my hands so steady and not make any sudden movements or anything like that. Once I was happy, I give the face its final coat of matte varnish and we can move on to the hair. For the hair, oh my gosh, I was so indecisive. And you can definitely tell while I'm assembling. I very highly don't recommend just freeballing an alternative hairstyle like I'm doing here. It sounds so lame, but I honestly was just so excited to give something new a try and I had just so many ideas that I wanted to do. And I feel as if I was trying to do so many different things at the same time that I, I ended up just making it look ridiculous. Here I'm making a shaved side undercut. I ended up covering this up later on in the final result, but I wanted to show the process that it took to get to the hairstyle that I went with in the end. Basically, with some yarn similar to the skin colour of the doll, in this case I used silver, I chopped up the fibres after brushing them out. Just in the same with making wefts, making the fibres really, really small. With craft glue, I attached them to the scalp, pressing them in really flat. After it's dried, it looks like freshly shaved hair. Kind of. I need to work on the technique uh, just a little bit more, I think. The hairstyle that I was trying to create in the beginning was a choppy micro fringe with two shaved sides. Once I added the parting on the top of the head, I came back to it a day later or so and realised it looked a little bit too similar to Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice. I know there has been a recent release of Monster High x Beetlejuice dolls. My doll was looking far too similar to that choppy black hair of that doll. 
So off camera, I decided to remove the fringe and cover up the shaved sides. When I do alternative dolls again, I'm definitely going to need to make sure I plan out the hair beforehand. Not just think that I can just add in all these different elements. It ends up just being so much harder than it needs to be. Nonetheless, it's time for accessories. Time to add some metal into this look with some piercings. I learned how to pierce dolls from a fellow creator here on YouTube of Crafts and Curious. If you'd like to learn how to make piercings for your own dolls, be sure to check out their dedicated how-to video. Links of course will be in the description below. As I ended up going for a very simple hair look, I wanted to add some accessories to the hair to give that pop of alternativeness. For this, I decided to make my own custom clips. To make them, I'm going to use tiny safety pins from my local craft shop. First things first, I cut off the safety bit of the safety pin, <laughs> then press the two ends together until the wires touch and gluing them together with some sap super glue. Once it was dry, I also glued a pin to the end to make application easier. I know with bleached brows, somebody out there is going to be like, oh, she has a five head. <laughs> um, so off camera, I added some framing pieces to the face just to fill in that void space. Last step of the face up is adding the gloss varnish, which is applied to the lips and eyes. The gloss really brings out that amazing sparkle of the lips and blushing. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, so pampered. Look at this little nail salon we've got going on. <laughs> as well as giving this doll some black nail polish, I'm going to give the hands and in turn the body some blushing with some soft pastels. I always forget to do this part. I just, there's a bit in my brain that just continuously forgets to do it, but I made sure to do it this time. I feel as if adding blushing to any doll just amplifies the design so much and makes it look so much more realistic. Once I was happy, I give the body a spray of varnish once more. Time to create some clothes for this doll, which I feel as if will never not be an absolutely chaotic process for me. One of the main things I wanted to do for this doll was a corset. To get the shape I needed for the corset, I created some pattern pieces from tape molding to start. Of course, if you'd like to learn about how to make those, I'd recommend checking out my video for my doll heiress, where I go into it further and show how to really do it. Links, of course, will be in the description below. For this doll, the main point of inspiration for the clothes was the Gucci Fall 2020 fashion show. I had initially attempted to make a dress design inspired by the absolutely beautiful designs, 
The soft dresses with the heavy leather is, is such a nice look. I wish I could dress like that every day. I had attempted over two days to create a mesh white dress that I could cover in heavy leather and metal to really replicate that look. But sadly, it just absolutely just did not want to work. Mesh fabrics are really hard to work with enough on human sized clothes, let alone doll sized. Be it fraying easily or not sitting flat, I just need so much more practice when it comes to that. In the end, I decided to shelve that design and ended up deciding to go with a black monochrome look. This time, taking reference from styles from Korean model Sora Choi. They have such an amazing style, very dark monochrome looks that they really pull off with so much ease. For this doll, I was so inspired by the dress that they wore to the New York Fashion Week in 2018. The dress is a long blazer dress with a pleated skirt belt attachment. For my dress, I'm going to make it a blazer dress but have one side the straight blazer and the other side the skirt attachment. Something I definitely did wrong here was from the get-go, the material. I wanted to recycle one of my tops that I didn't want anymore, so I thought this project would be a great opportunity to do so. I really didn't comprehend how wooly this material was though. Being the wool that I chose, it ended up making the dress look a lot more casual as opposed to very fashion week looking. I think if I wanted to do this again, I would use something like cotton or polyester for a very structured blazer look. Nonetheless, I guess it can be interpreted as something like a, a nice and warm dress for the winter months. I know that I've been complaining a lot about the dressmaking in this video. Of course, I don't mean to be negative. I just feel as if when practicing something that I'm not confident in, I take more notes about things that haven't worked and highlight that. Being a self-taught artist is trial and error with everything that you do. I'll spend a long time working on something and will come across roadblocks along the way. I like to share that with people who are also budding learners and perhaps that will save them the grief of making the same mistakes. As for some added accessories to the legs, I decided to add a garter thing. I noticed that they were quite popular at the moment, so I thought that it would be nice to incorporate it in the design. On the garter and the necklace, I attached some metal studs that I bought online before the lockdown in June. <laughs> I don't know why it took months to arrive, but it did. Every time I look at them, I'm just like, I hate you. Why did you take so long to arrive? <laughs> Last step on this doll was adding some chains to the corset. I felt it made the style look so much more textured. Once I was happy, I can assemble the doll back together and give this doll its well-deserved photo shoot. For the name, I think I'm going to go with Astrid.
Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of Astrid in the comments below and what you would like to see made next. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would appreciate it so, so much. A huge thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. It's through your support that I'm able to keep the channel going and create these dolls. So thank you. With that all being said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.